Hey everyone, Paul Mann here and welcome to my videos on Practical Python. In this video we're going to look at SSH and Python. SSH, or Secure Shell, is a network protocol that allows administrators to securely connect to a remote host over an unsecured network. SSH can use public key encryption for authentication and this is a great real-world application for the public key encryption videos we did earlier. This video will also help you understand SSH, even if you're not going to use Python. So SSH is widely used for connecting to Linux and terminal-based systems. And again, some of this can be done at the command prompt and with bash scripts. But we're going to use Python because that's what gives us the most flexibility. So some background on connectivity with SSH before we start coding. Basically how it works is the client opens up a connection to a remote host. The host negotiates the encryption and presents the client with its SSH public key to verify the authenticity of the host. The server then creates an encrypted tunnel with symmetric encryption and something called Diffie-Hellman. The user then can authenticate to the server with their username and password through this secure tunnel. We'll write some Python code to automate this step. But a more secure and easier way to authenticate without passwords is with SSH keys. We will modify our code to connect this way as well, so you can connect to multiple servers with your Python scripts. For our environment here, I have a remote host, which is a Raspberry Pi, and a client, which is a terminal window on a Mac. SSH can be configured on a PC as well, both as a client and as a server. You may have some additional software. On Windows 10, you can look in your control panel to see what needs to be installed. To enable SSH on a Mac or a terminal-based system, you simply type system CTL enable SSH. On a PC, you can enable it in the services. And after that, assuming you have a username on the host server, we should be all set. So to connect and do something useful with SSH in Python, we'll use the Paramico library, which I found on pypi.org. You'll find some general instructions and demo files here on the GitHub page. So as always, we need to install the module first, and Paramico module is installed with pip3. It's straightforward. I suggest you run the pip3 list command to verify that it's been installed and you have the right version. Next, we need to log into the server one time to get the public key, which is here. This is a fingerprint of it, and that's copied to a file on the client computer, and this is important for Paramico to work. So it's put, saved automatically in the known hosts in the .ssh directory, and we'll cat that out here to see that the fingerprint for that server, that nine, is in that file. Paramico will check for this, and if it's not there, the connection will fail. It's also a good practice when we're connecting to remote hosts over the internet. It verifies that we're connecting to who we think we are connecting. I've created a directory, Python, here to put description. I'm using the Vim editor out of Linux to write this code. You could use whatever editor you want, or you could use PyCharm or, or whatever. So the code is very simple. I've written it here so I don't have to type out each line. But it starts with importing the modules, Paramico and Sys. Also on line 5, I have a list that I open up so we can save our results to. This is not necessary, but it makes it easier to parse the data that comes from the output of whatever command is run in Linux on the server. So I created a function here to do the connection. Um, and established a client for an instance of the SSH client um, class, and that's in on line eight. On line nine, we're verifying the host, the host keys. So this is the step I mentioned earlier about logging in. We needed to do this so we can verify our host keys with what's coming in. And then on ten, we simply connect to the server with a username and a password. I assume your password will be better than this. And line 12 is the meat of the uh, Paramico module, which has three variables, standard input, output, and error. And they're mapped to the uh, client exec command. So this is where we put our Linux command, whether it's ls or copy or whatever we want to do, we would put it in here. What I've done is the ss command for listening TCP uh, ports. Um, so I'm going to run this here and we're going to see what ports are actively listening on that server. And then we're going to, uh, the uh, standard output is the variable we're going to use and that's an iterable uh, variable. We can go through it and 
append each line to the results list. So we'll get a list of results. Um, depending on what we're doing, that list may be very long or short. And finally, um, down on 19, then I call the function and run, loop through the results list to print out what we actually, what the output of the command was. And we need to use the sys exit to close the connection. That's important. Now I've done this without putting it in a function with the, without the def SSH con, and it does generate an error when you do that for some unknown reason to everyone it seems. So I'd suggest that you do it exactly like here where you put the SSH, the Paramico classes and methods in a function and just simply call it. Okay, so uh, let's run this. So when we run this, we should get a list of open ports listening ports for TCP that are running on that server. And it's a good security function. If you're managing lots of servers, it's an easy way to do it. So let's go in and change our Python file one more time, and we'll put another command in. This one is useful also. It looks at the services that are running on a remote machine, the ones that are actually active. So when we run this, we should see what's running on that server. And there it is, a list that you can parse and compare. So it is a useful utility uh, too, and like I said, when you're managing lots of servers, it can become cumbersome logging in every time. So now we're going to change the authentication method to make it easier and to log into multiple servers too. Up till now, we have have our known hosts in the SSH directory, but we're going to create our own key pair with the SSH keygen utility. One thing to note here is we can't put a passphrase on the key pair because Paramico has some issue with that. I know that that's weird to be not doing that, but for now we're gonna to have to skip the pass, so we just hit enter for this step. After we run this, we'll have two extra files in the SSH directory, one the private key and the public key. And the private key, the public key IDRSA pub is the key that we're gonna to send to the server and use as our authentication. So there's, SSH has a utility for that, copy ID. You could copy and paste this, but this is a handy utility and I think the easiest way to do it. Um, it automatically copies it into the authorized host file on the server. So we'll be asked for a password the first time, and this is the password of the server, not of the keys. And once we do that, then it'll tell us that it's okay and we just need to log in again. So when we log in the next time, we should log straight into a prompt and not be prompted for any uh, password. And then we'll know that our public key is working. Okay, so it appears to be working. We didn't get prompted and we're in. We're going to exit out now and modify our, Apple, our Python script so that to remove the password. And we'll just change the command just to something else to verify that it's working. So you can see on line 10, we remove the password, we don't need that anymore. And we do still need line nine to check the host key, so Paramico will look. And then I've added on line 13 to make a directory called Paramico test on the server when this runs, and that's how we'll know it ran successfully. So if we run this script now, we can get any errors back, so it most likely did run. We'll verify that by logging into the remote SSH server. And there's the uh, directory that we created. So this concludes the test. It's a really handy utility. It's only a few lines of Python and it gives us the ability to ba basically run any command on the server that we choose and ca capture that information and parse it any way you want. Um, so I think this is a really good use of Python. Like I said, it can be done with, with bash scripts as well. And I'm not disrespecting the greppers and pipers in bash but if you're not familiar with bash then this is a, a really great alternative with minimum amount of uh, python coding required so that's it for this video i hope you learned something and please don't forget to like and share and subscribe and uh, the code for this will be on my github site at the link below so until the next time take care talk soon